A while back, we made a solid wood exterior door, and there are a lot of little lessons that may be learned from that project. I already made a video about the loose tenon joinery that we used, and in the near future, we'll discuss other parts of the project as well. But today, I wanted to talk about the veneering, because this is a skill that I think too many woodworkers dismiss out of hand as too difficult or too expensive for a weekend workshop. But there are times when every woodworker could use some basic veneering skills because it will open up a lot of new possibilities for future projects. This door was a good example because even though it is a solid ash door inside and out, it could not have been made without some basic veneering skills because the inner core was cut into strips and then re-glued together to disrupt the grain and to make it more stable. Thick veneers were then glued to the outside surfaces to restore the appearance of single slabs instead of a butcher block look. Cutting your own veneers is not difficult. There are many ways to do it, and there are many resawing tutorials out there that explain the process with a bandsaw or even a table saw. Here I want to focus on what is perhaps the more intimidating part of the process, how to apply even clamping pressure so the veneer will stick to your substrate panel. There are several ways to do it, but we're going to touch on three methods that are most accessible for the small workshop. The first is the clampless method. This involves contact cement, which is applied evenly with a roller to both surfaces. Keep in mind that water-based contact cement may make your veneer curl more than solvent-based cement will, and curling can make this process a little more difficult. Let both surfaces dry until they're tacky to the touch. Then, place them together. In this case, the veneer was oversized, so precise alignment wasn't an issue. But especially with larger pieces, you may wish to use some dowels to help position the piece on the substrate, then pull them out one at a time, much like countertop laminate is applied. Contact cement is great because it doesn't require clamps, but it does require pressure to form a bond. A block of wood or a roller may be used to press the veneer down firmly. Then the edges may be trimmed and you're all done. Contact cement veneering is fast and easy, but the cement produces harmful fumes and it may not be the best adhesive for all types of veneer. You want to look into that if you plan on using contact cement. The next method involves regular wood glue, which doesn't produce harmful fumes. But yellow glue is full of water and it will curl your veneers, so even clamping pressure is vital for a good bond. That's what platens are for. Platens are just scraps of thick material that help distribute clamping pressure across wider surfaces. Melamine makes great platens because glue will not stick to its surface. You'll still need plenty of clamps, but the platens will even out the pressure across a wider panel where your clamps can't reach. Of course, if the panel is too wide, platens and clamps may not apply enough pressure to the center. So that brings us to our third method, a vacuum press. This is actually my favorite, even for small pieces, because vacuum pressing is so easy and effective. Here we're using a relatively inexpensive vacuum bag system that was designed for people who make skateboards. I love it because the air can be removed with a hand pump instead of an expensive electric vacuum pump and the special valve auto seals when you stop pumping. This is not a sponsored product, I bought it myself, but it works really well. I think it's a perfect inexpensive option for a small shop. I'll link to it below. If it's in your budget, get one. You're gonna need it someday. By the way, if you're wondering what that black mesh is for, it's to create paths for the air to escape so pockets won't form inside the bag and deny you the even pressure you need. You do not have to completely wrap the project in mesh. We just happen to have some big pieces on hand. While we can make a lengthy tutorial about all the finer points of veneering, I just wanted to keep this video simple because it doesn't have to be complicated or intimidating. Especially for smaller panels, it may be as easy as you just saw me demonstrate here. Try it sometime, perhaps first on a small box or a cabinet you may just open up a whole new world of possibilities for your future shop projects. See you next time. I've been using DuraGrit carbide sanding products for years, and I still haven't worn out the first ones I bought. If I have a rough edge to smooth, a corner to chamfer, or a curve to shape, 
More often than not, I'm reaching for one of these cleverly designed tools. It's one of those workshop secrets I wish I'd discovered long ago. Check out the link below this video to see for yourself. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.